we could probably spend hours sitting here talking about the offensive line. It's one of Adam's favorite passions and hobbies <laughs> outside of the show to be able to talk about it. Um, those are obviously two of the big concerns. You know, one of the other concerns that a lot of people have are the injuries, right? Yeah. So going into week one, usually, the, you know, the, the dog days of winter is when you see all, all the players being injured <laughs> and looking for the bye week. We haven't even gotten to week one yet, and we haven't had Saquon Barkley, Kadarius Tony, Kenny Galladay, um, you know, Evan Ingram, Ben Hurd, Kyle, Kyle Rudolph, the list goes on and on. How big, uh, you know, of a concern are some of those injuries going into this week one matchup against the Broncos? You didn't even mention our main guy who always is injured. That's Sterling Shepard. I mean, my guy can't get through a season. Jesus Christ. I'm like, if you are being paid all this money, can you please just get through a season? The best ability is availability, right? So it's somehow, some way, you find yourself with a broken finger, a broken toe. Like, it's never something so significant where I'm like, you know, suck it up. Like, that's where I am at. With he changed this, his I number, think. though. So it's going to be okay now. It's like now it's the new different player. Gods won't know different player. actually him out there. Yeah. <laughs> new injury. But no, you're right. There's a lot of injuries going into the season and I'm just beyond can they deliver on the field can they get on the field and stay healthy I think that's offensively what's going to be key because if Daniel Jones is up and looking for Evan Ingram to be the guy we're in big trouble like Kyle Rudolph can definitely deliver I've seen it you know firsthand when the Vikings played the Saints when I was working over there so I've seen that he can step up but can Evan Ingram step up and deliver when it matters like sure you can have great catches on games that were like okay we probably definitely should have won but in the trenches when it's fourth quarter you know we have five minutes left can and you make the catches that are going to get us over the edge. And that's, I think that is such the question mark, even some of these guys and Evan Ingram, again, some injury concerns around him coming into the year. Of course it has to be that way, but so much of the positivity around all the acquisitions. And then you look, and even the, the rookie class, right? Aaron Robinson in the secondary Ellerson Smith, you know, you have Aziz Ojolari, but it looks like it's going to be a slow and steady progress there. There's a couple of things, you know, you mentioned about how the defense looks strong. And I think, the one concern I have, and this is a very recent concern that developed in my mind, just about you know two days before the game, of we all assume that it's going to be a very strong defensive unit and that Leonard Williams is going to hold it down. I think it will be, but there is still some area of, but we don't have elite level pass rushing still. It could be. I, I love Lorenzo Carter. It looks like O'Shea and Ximenez is, is, is getting back and healthy and going to be a contributor. But it, there is this world where with the way the NFL is, and even coming to week one, like Teddy Bridgewater can look a lot better if you give him time. Like I feel like that version of a quarterback, a game manager, not going to light it up, but also not going to make big mistakes. Well, if you don't at least get there and ruffle him and make him throw off balance and make him make a couple of mistakes along the way, all of a sudden you'll be sitting there with, eh, you know, two, 225, 70 plus completion percentage, maybe one touchdown, no picks. And that's how a game like this does get away from you. See, I think you guys are incapable of calling people to the carpet because Dexter Lawrence, we're looking at you, big dog. Like, I think all this time we have at, we have seen your Clemson days mm -hmm. and we thought that that was going to translate and, you know, jump off the page. And it really hasn't, if we're being honest. I'm so glad we got rid of BJ Hill. Shout out to another NC State guy. I saw the ACC love here, right? He was one that I'm like, okay, it was cool, but it's just not working. I don't know how we're sticking with this. But Dexter Lawrence, I think, is another one where he has to have a big season or we have to have a conversation. Man, that's rough too because I, I love <laughs> I loved the pick of him in the draft. Yeah. I loved what I saw in his rookie year, and then I think like you saw physically how he changed into year number two, where you were like, "Hey, I, I like the direction you're going," but you're probably right where it is. Like you're a one on one beats your matchup guy that needs mm -hmm. to dominate physically and get after the quarterback. So, well, that kind of stings, Andy, doesn't it? A little bit because we <laughs> we did not have that list as a player that we were keeping our eye on and, and, and really saying you need to be the expectations we have on Leonard Williams probably need to be applied to Dexter Lawrence as well. Yeah, I mean, we just as Giant fans only point out the players that we're very, very concerned about. Dexter Lawrence <laughs> is not necessarily one of them. So you're shining a light and saying, like, you need to be the guy this year. You are the dude. Makes me feel even worse than I did before. So thanks, Candace, for that. I, I appreciate so that. It's nice. Well, well, you know what, Candace? How about we, we – let's restart this. Okay. Why don't you say something nice about the New York football <laughs> Giants going into week one? What what I'm will so Giant fans get excited about? If we're worried about Dexter Lawrence, if we're worried about all offensive line, mm -hmm. injuries, Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley's health, what are the things that the Giant fans could look towards and say, this is something to get excited about going into week one? 
Oh, man, that's that's probably the hardest question I'm going to have all day. I really am happy, though, that Saquon is back. I think that that brings an energy and a confidence with DJ so he knows he doesn't have to do everything himself. So that's my one compliment. I do think that the NFC East is always winnable. So that's another thing. If you just step up to the plate, you play your games how you're supposed to play. Do I think Washington is going to be a great team? Absolutely. Do I think Philly? Absolutely not. The Cowboys, can Dak stay healthy? So this this comp, this excuse me division is certainly winnable, and I think – we know when we get a uh, eight and nine Giants, there's anything can happen. Do I think you know Daniel Jones is going to take us to Super Bowl? Maybe not, but a lot of people didn't believe Eli could either. So it's, if he's like the third coming, like maybe <laughs> of a Manning brother, maybe we can figure it out. And so I'm just going to have confidence that if they just get themselves in a, in a confident space, I think Logan Ryan is great. I think his leadership style is great. I think the way he has just tried to, you know, well, not tried, taking less money in order to, you know, get under the cap, all of those kind of things. I think that, okay, we're getting the right people. David Gettleman, you know, I'm not a huge fan, but that's a whole nother story for another day. That's... I think that ultimately the Giants are in a good place to put themselves at the top of the division conversation.